In the presence of heterogeneous error variance, one of our assumptions of the analysis of variance would not be met. Remember that we're assuming that error in the population has a particular distributional shape, it'll be normal, and we're assuming that it has equal variance. That is, regardless of which condition we're in, we assume that the variability around the mean of that group will be the same. So in our sample estimates of the population, the way we'll get an insight into the population error is of course looking at the EIJKs. So in our two-factor model, I even showed you these. That is, within each combination of route and time of day, we had estimates of the epsilon terms. So the E's in our model were simply the residuals, the variability around each group's mean of each individual observation. With larger designs, the 4x4, we have the same EIJKs. That is, we still have within each combination of groups estimates of the epsilon terms. So in our distributional estimate, we're assuming that the variance in each of those combinations in the populations is really the same. Now, importantly, we're assuming that this assumption is true whether or not the null hypothesis is true. So let me go forward to a population representation and let's look at this assumption in multiple situations. So what I'm showing you here is a distribution of the attribute of time to campus. So these are not sampling distribution representations. This is specifically the distribution of the attribute, just what times I would observe. Now I've left the axis off because that's not really critical in this case. And what I want you to look at is the spread of the different distributions. Now right now, the null hypothesis is true. So what I'm showing you is actually all four distributions for each of the different routes to campus. But since the null hypothesis is true, there's no mean offset. So all of these different distributions are actually the same. So if we look at the notation I use, we're saying that this distribution is normal with a mean dot dot, so the same mean, there's no subscripts here, and equal variance. Now notice what happens when I represent the situation where HO is false or H1 is true. So what I've done is I've spread out these populations to the degree that our sample was. So we're assuming our sample gave us a perfect estimate in this case. But notice something about this. We gain a subscript for the mean. That is to represent the mean of these different groups. We actually have an offset, so we have J terms. But the variance is the same. And you can simply see that graphically. This is what our analysis of variance model is assuming the population looks like. That is, even if we find differences, we're still assuming that the spread within those populations, here populations represents the different routes to campus. So within those different routes to campus, we're assuming that the spread of data is equal. Now that is the homogeneity of variance assumption and a critical assumption on which our inferences rest. Now let me show you a situation where we had violated that equal variance assumption. And this is more or less what the measurements look like when I took these different routes to campus. So what I actually observed was something more like this. So Gilman Drive actually had a more constrained distribution. There was less variance in that distribution. And this happens to be the case because Gilman Drive has fewer stoplights. It just is the case that it's less variable because of something consequential in nature. Now take a really variable route, so La Jolla Village Drive. This was the most variable route that I observed. It maybe wasn't this variable, I'm exaggerating it for illustration here. But it really was the case that La Jolla Village Drive could be very fast if you make all the lights, which is an improbable event, but I've done it a few times. Or it could take a huge amount of time if you just miss every single light. Somehow it seems like I do that more often. Whereas Nobel Drive and Genesee Drive were more or less average in terms of their variability. So this is a situation where H1 is true, but in the presence of heterogeneous variants. And this is heterogeneous error here, because remember, even though I'm showing you the distributions with the attribute variance, that is, across the actual measurements in time, when we actually calculate error in the population or in our sample, it's error relative to a group mean. So whether I'm showing you the distributions of the attribute or the distribution of epsilon itself, we can really interpret it the same way.